Hi, I'm Karen Collins. I'm talking today with Dr. Susan Stack, who's a registered dietitian and associate professor of epidemiology and biostatistics at the University of South Carolina in Columbia. Much of her work involves the intersection of inflammation and chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease and cancer. So it's a really hot topic and something that I know many people want to know more about. That we wanted to, to capture the whole diet um, because, you know, certain foods may have um, little, maybe higher sugar, but then they may have more, you know, fruits may have more flavonoids or phytochemicals or antioxidants. Um, and so we want to balance that out and, and think about the whole diet mm -hmm. and what people are eating. Um, and so we actually looked at, like I said, 45 different dietary factors, macronutrients, micronutrients, uh, vitamins, minerals, different herbs and spices, and, um, you know, took the totality of the evidence for those 45 factors. We're applying that now to studies of cancer and other disease outcomes. We've actually examined this now in the Women's Health Initiative, which is a very large observational and clinical trial um, that was done in the United States, um, and they collected food frequency questionnaire data from all of the women. And so we've actually found then that women who are consuming a more pro-inflammatory diet based on this dietary inflammatory index score um, were at increased risk of colorectal cancer. And um, we've looked at it in relation to breast cancer as well. The results there are interesting in that there was no uh, direct association w between the, the dietary inflammatory index score and invasive breast cancer incidence. But there, may, there was a hint of, of or a suggestion of an increased risk for specific tumor subtypes, like HER2 positive breast cancers, um, and also suggestion of increased risk of breast cancer mortality. Um, and so I think we've seen that in a number of studies now, um, especially you know, the AICI report that just came out on breast cancer survivors, um, that diet and physical activity as well that you know, tend to be um, maybe even more highly related to survival with breast cancer as opposed to the incidence or uh, prevention of the disease. One of the things that may also confound that uh, breast cancer association is that alcohol is a component of the dietary inflammatory index and it actually has an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. effect score, um, but we know that alcohol increases the risk of breast cancer. Right. Um, so the fact that alcohol is, is you know, contributing to an anti-inflammatory score in the dietary inflammatory index may kind of mask the associ you know any type of association we might see with breast cancer uh, because of its known increased risk. And, and that's a great example of mm -hmm. the, the difficulty of the hearing that something is, mm -hmm. oh, this is anti-inflammatory. It, right. It's how it all fits in with everything in terms of, of its effect on inflammation, but then also inflammation is just one piece of the puzzle right, that's in, true. in terms of disease risk, right? right. That's exactly right healthy weight, healthy body composition really mm -hmm. is what we're talking about, is a piece of this too. So if you mm -hmm. if you ate all kinds of healthy foods, but you were eating so many healthy foods you were gaining weight or <laughs> didn't have the extra, right. that, that's a, we, we have to recognize that's a piece in here too, right? True. And certainly obesity you know, is associated with higher chronic inflammation. So that is certainly a piece that affects inflammation um, and that needs to be addressed and thought about in, in any kind of healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They've adjusted for for weight, and usually Correct. they adjust for physical activity too, Correct. in some measure. Right. And then beyond that, they still see mm -hmm. that these that our eating choices make a difference. That's right. And we've certainly done that in any of the studies that I've talked about relating the dietary inflammatory index to a cancer outcome. We adjust for body mass index, or sometimes we have waist to hip uh, circumference, our ratio, waist to hip ratio, um, and physical activity as well. We adjust for those things in. Uh, the statistical models, so that, like you said, it, we can, you know, we can um, hopefully say that it's not just because of those other factors, but truly diet is having an independent effect. Where, where are the misconceptions that you would really like to correct? Uh, in general, um, individuals think, you know, okay, if something's good, then more is going to be better. And I think time and time again, we've seen in the epidemiologic studies and clinical trials that have been done to try to test some of these individual factors like beta carotene or vitamin E or selenium, um, you know, that taking high dose supplements or, or trying to, to consume a lot of these products um, or these agents is, is not going to be better. Um, 
and in some cases it can actually be harmful. So I think the idea is consuming a well-balanced diet, trying to get a variety of fruits and vegetables so that you are getting a variety of those vitamins and phytochemicals um, is the best advice rather than focusing in or zeroing in on only one factor. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, and, and really based on this index, is that it all comes together mm -hmm. that it, it may be eating more of these foods than many Americans currently do, eating right. more vegetables or um, you know, more whole mm -hmm. grains or whatever, but that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that they need to go crazy. So it's, it really, I guess, part of the message from what you're seeing with the, the Dietary Inflammatory Index and the relationship to, to disease risk is that you don't have to go crazy, that if you just make a, an achievable change, right. that is enough to make a difference in CRP mm -hmm. as an indicator of inflammation right. and enough to make a difference in, in disease risk. Right, no, and I think that's really important. Um, the other thing we've seen is um, among individuals with higher CRP, ch making changes in diet even without uh, a change in weight loss, or a change in weight, or, you know, an actual weight loss, um, can have beneficial effects on CRP. So changing diet in and of itself, um, even if it doesn't result in, in you know, immediate weight loss, can have a significant effect on some of these inflammatory biomarkers. It's a really positive message. Well, thank you so much okay. for this time today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Please come back for another edition of Smart Bites as we talk about how we take nutrition from daunting to doable.